can you use touch controls? Technically, you can. Today we're checking out the Raz Pad 3 and this thing's been out for a couple years now, a year, at least a year. And uh, here's the components list and basically you turn a Raspberry Pi 4 into a tablet. You do need to buy the Raspberry Pi 4 separately. Um, but this tablet has a full enclosure, it has relocated I.O. ports, um, you can still access GPIO, so applications, everything from gaming to a multimedia thing, uh, doing schoolwork, doing messing with sensors, 3D printing, you can use it like as a tablet with your security camera in your house, all sorts of things. So we're just unpacking it here. You can get it for a plug for US, EU, or wherever you are around the world. And uh, the price fluctuates, and I've seen it, you know, around three to two hundred dollars is is where it, I've seen it. it might be cheaper as time goes on, and uh, you know, so it does have a protective uh, tape on top of the screen there, so that's why it doesn't look very glossy. And uh, you're going to see here it has tons of I/O ports. You know, it's saying here, make sure you remove the SD card. We are going to have to open this up and set it all up, so we're going to be taking out all five screws on the back of it. Um, but on the sides here, you got a full size HDMI, you got Ethernet full size, you got three USB 3.0s, but they only go into one slot on the actual Pi itself, so it's three into one. HDMI full size headphone jack and the power in for the power adapter. GPIO on the other side, and there's a little nether ribbon cable hole on the back. Uh, do note there's batteries inside, so it does run on battery power. There's the battery indicator here on the bottom or the middle, and then you have. Um, brightness, volume, and power on, and a micro SD slot. That little uh, thing on the far left there is just a way to open it up when you have it unscrewed. It's just kind of a like a lever, if you will. So as I was saying earlier, lots of applications are the thing. Yes, you can play games on it. Do note, though, that the resolution is 1280 by, I think it's like, what is it, 1080, whatever that red default resolution is, which isn't a full resolution that, like, monitors and TVs will necessarily run on, especially on, like, a lot of the images that I do videos on on my channel. So you either need to do a fresh install and make sure the resolution is set up from the default, or you need to go into the config file and change all of that for default so that the bezels fit over everything and it just works so right now i'm just unscrewing it and uh as you see no raspberry pi in there but it has the two boards here one on the right which is gonna you know do the talking to the screen it also the speakers hook into that um, and then all the io ports on the other side and the controls go into that you can also see the batteries all the way in the back the, the little kind of round cylinder there tried to see if my case would fit in here but it doesn't on the back side there, there's a slot for a fan you need to screw in. The fan itself works, but it's loud as heck. I would probably consider replacing it. It's very cheap. So all we're going to do is we're going to put this pie in here, screw it down, and then add all of our cables. The fitment is a little tight. I, I, I don't think it's as precise, you know, as I would have liked. Like there's a little bit of pressure on the, some of the cables are a little too long. And so there's a little bit of pressure. And then uh, that micro SD, there's a micro SD ribbon cable as well. It's all kind of you know, it, it works. Don't get me wrong. It just was not perfect. I wouldn't say it was perfect. So here I am just running all the cables, everything from power to the Pi, the HDMI to the Pi, USB to the Pi, Ethernet to the Pi, and then the micro SD card adapter. Um, you'll do a close up here in just a moment. But this is just all the hardware setup. It's not too difficult. But uh, right shortly after this, we're going to show you the operating system and also if you can game on it or not. Um, I'd have to say, you know, it's for portability, it's pretty cool. And if you want to get away from Linux, like you don't want an Android uh, system, you know, this is a good alternative for like the perfect tinkering thing. Um, you can put drivers in Linux, you can hook it to a 3D printer, a camera, SLR camera, you have a screen with you. So it's very versatile in that regard. And you're not running on Android, you're running on Linux, right? So uh, for those reasons, I can see why a lot of people would be interested in it. If you just want to do portable gaming, though, I do think you could probably find a cheaper solution out there myself. But um, I have to say the development here and all the thought that went into is pretty cool. As you can see here, those are all the adapters. All you do now is you put the pie in and then you hook it all up. And here it is all hooked up. All right, so what have we done? We have power to power. We have micro HDMI to micro HDMI. We have USB 3 to USB 3. We have Ethernet to Ethernet. We've added the shim right here, the accelerometer. So that what this is going to do is when we move it around or we rotate the screen, it's going to sense that. We then took our micro SD uh, adapter here. We put the adapter here into the micro SD slot in the Pi, and then we, we put the ribbon cable into this little I.O. Uh, board over here. 
And then we also mounted our fan, which is the four included screws, and then we plugged the power of the of that there. You have your power, your batteries here. I did not put the heat sinks on. You would put those on respectively on these three uh, chips here. Um, but you know, and then you have a couple extra screws uh, available. Here's your two stereo speakers. Make sure the wires clear. This little there's a little screw hole here. You don't want the wire to be right on top of it. So clear the wire there. And other than that, it's it's fairly simple. So now we're just going to go ahead and put this back on. So here I booted up a 512 gigabyte image and some of the games ran, some of the games I had to change the config file, but I'm running on an Xbox 360 controller, but you can also absolutely do Bluetooth or, you know, any other way you want to hook up a controller to the Pi. Can you use touch controls? Technically, you can. So I'm not a fan of touch controls, but you could use them. I think it's cool just for wireless controllers and things like that. So here I am installing the Raspberry Pi OS, just the generic one. If you Google Raspberry Pi OS, you just install the installer, you put it on a micro SD card, and it's a fresh install. I'm setting up my Wi-Fi and things like that. And then from here, you'd probably want to go to the web browser and then go to the Raspad launcher install. So they, they discontinued the Raspad operating system and now it's just a raspad launcher where they use the raspberry pi operating system and then add their own launcher on top of it now i could not for the life of me get it to work it would just keep failing on this step where i was downloading the launcher install i then tried to do the manual install where you go into the terminal and you add all that stuff in. you do it manually where you download the file and then you put it you make a new directory and then you're replacing the stock <clears throat> applications on the operating system and it just would not work. You can see here though the touchscreen works beautifully just stock with any operating system. I even installed Twister later, Twister OS which is one of my favorites and uh, it worked really well. So um, the really the only reason why I would want to do the launcher was one just to check it out see what kind of development they did on it and what it looked like. I'm sure it's a nice experience but also I want to use that gyro chip that we added onto this thing which would allow you to flip the screen vertically um, and I'm, you're unable to do that or at least mine didn't when I flip my screen because I don't think the drivers are installed I think you have to install those drivers separately so you might be able to just go get those drivers and or you might not have the issues I had here or just would not install the the OS that being said you can you know do you really need that you know a lot of you aren't going to want that a lot of you're going to put this together put on whatever operating system you want and then you're going to start tinkering with it, whether it be hooking up a 3D printer to it, hooking up a camera to it, or playing retro games, or whatever else you plan on doing. So here's Twister operating system just to show you I did install it. I tried installing the launcher, the Raspad 3 launcher on this operating system, and I also ran into problems, similar problems to the last one. But I just wanted to show you here that it just connects. It runs really well, and it's cool. I think you know these operating systems are really underrated. Like They're awesome. They're really fun to play with. So as you see, even just web browsing, you know, you can hook up a Bluetooth keyboard, a mouse, or just use a touch screen and the on-screen keyboard. You can full screen YouTube videos and things. It's a little clunky with video playback, but I bet if you're writing papers or using this as a student, you can totally get away with it. And or like I said, any kind of project or anything like that with light typing and things like that, this thing's going to work like a charm. And the fact that it's portable and it runs on a battery, really cool stuff.
So it is very clean. You can put all sorts of operating systems on it. Um, I did check one of the reviews though, and I agree with this review right here, that it is very squished inside. Um, but I, I'm not too concerned, but I do understand that, that like all the wires in there and stuff are kind of iffy. As far as installing everything, um, do know that if you are going to run like RetroPie, Raspberry Pi, this is running at 1280 by 800. So you need to change the default resolution um, on your, you know, it should auto detect if it's a brand new image. But a lot of these pre-built images that you see me review a lot, they are pre-set up for like 1080p, for example, or, or, you know, a slightly different resolution. And so the bezels might be a little off, the, the centering, you might have to change the config file and or go into RetroArch and manually change that stuff. Um, as far as installing, I did it a couple ways. I tried with the regular Raspberry Pi operating system, which I had the best luck for. And then I tried to do the Raspad launcher. I, for some reason, it just would not stall, install. But the only thing I was really looking forward to is this auto rotate shim, which allows you to rotate it to vertical, which I just kind of wanted to show on the video, but I just couldn't get it to work. And, you know, I, I, I need to try a different operating system or double check my Wi-Fi. It just, it kept saying, um, internet error but i don't know why it was saying that when i had connection and i was on youtube i who knows i i don't know if maybe something's wrong with the github i'm not entirely sure um, but it's that easy to to do as far as the applications go obviously gaming i think 3d printing is huge security camera even adding an slr camera to your um adding like an slr camera to your raspberry pi could be cool diagnosis uh you know different um you know, exploring the internet, use it like a tablet uh, for schoolwork, uh, things like that. I think the biggest deal is it's Linux, right? It's not like buying a Samsung tablet where it's filled with bloatware and it's running Android and everything else. So, you know, if you're a tinker and you're just really into the Raspberry Pi, it might be something to consider. They do also have this on-screen keyboard here that comes with the software. So you can absolutely install this and then you wouldn't need a Bluetooth keyboard or anything like that. So it really does genuinely turn it into a tablet. That's one other thing to consider while considering this tablet. But anyways, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.